okay, so now we're on uh, our base turn here and we're going to make a left for final. Um, as you can hear, if you drop the manifold pressure too low, it will make that annoying beep, so just keep it up just above it. And you want to be slowing down to approximately 200 before you deploy any flaps. When you get to, de uh, to 200, you, be you can begin deploying flaps. And uh, for, for a normal landing, you want to use um, full flaps. So I'm just going to engage them now because about around 175, all of your flaps will come down. Above that figure, you won't be able to get the last notches of flaps down. And now, once you're below 150, you can deploy the gear. Now there's two types of landing in the P-51, one harder than the other, and one that's uh, good for early on. Um, the first one, which I'll be showing you, is the one that you should probably try out first, which is the three-pointer, which is where you land on all three wheels at the same time. This just means that you need to keep the angle that you are, you would, if you were just sitting on the ground as you land, and you basically want to just stall it over the runway. It can be a little tricky to get the hang of in this aeroplane, since it's quite twitchy and it's easy to stall, but um, if you just watch and um, watch the movements on the uh, stick, try and keep the aeroplane coordinated when you cone for landing. And just watch, just over the runway we're going to be reducing to zero throttle, just so we can uh, stall out the aeroplane over the runway. So zero throttle there, pitch the aeroplane up, and there we go onto the three wheels. And now when you're coming to a stop, you want to, once you're on the ground, after about one second of being on the ground with all three wheels, you want to hold the uh, stick all the way back. This will lock the tail wheel, which will prevent you from doing any wild skidding. And then you just want to keep it straight with the rudder pedals. Do not use any toe brakes until you're significantly slower, because if you use the brakes, you'll probably skid out and die. Or it'll turn into some kind of horrible ground loop. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring the flaps up, take off again, and I'll show you the second method, which is the two-point landing, which is a little trickier, but um, much, much nicer once you get the hang of it. It also allows you to see uh, where you're going uh, when you're flying the aeroplane and landing it. So we're just going to take off, and I'll see you when we're at the fi finals. So we're just on downwind, and... Uh, we're going to be making a, uh, a turn for base and final in a minute. But I'm just going to explain why the aeroplane bounces when you do a two-pointer. Um, when you do a two-pointer, you bring it down onto the two wheels, of course, the two front wheels. However, when you're descending, your, um, your center of mass is just behind the wheels, which means when you touch down, that center of mass, because it's of its momentum, it carries on going. This causes the aeroplane to pitch back giving it lots of lift and then jumping back up into the air causing you to bounce. Now the way you avoid this is by just before rele uh, just before you touch down on the runway you release all of your pressure on the elevators keeping you in the air and you let the aeroplane drop onto the runway. If you do this just right you'll let the two wheels just settle down onto the runway nice and if you do it too early you'll uh, smash the aeroplane down onto the ground and if you do it too late you'll bounce of course. So I'll show you now, we're just going to bring the throttle back again, drop the flaps down, notch by notch, we can drop them all down once we're past 175, which is about now. So we'll drop all the flaps down, we'll drop the gear, and we'll do a similar approach as before. However, this time we're going to be touching down, rather than 100, we're going to be touching down around 110 to 120. This is so we have that extra speed to keep our tail in the air and uh, allow us to land um, while still look, being able to see forwards on the aeroplane. So remember, just before we touch down, we're going to drop, we're going to completely release the uh, stick forwards and let it s settle down onto the runway. The key with the Mustang is to keep an eye on the speed just while you're coming over the runway. You don't want it to get too low, otherwise you'll stall out and that results in another deathly crash. So, I'm just going to keep the throttle up, just a tad, just come over the runway and release. Not the best two point landing, but you see the uh, the idea behind it. If I hadn't released then, the aeroplane would have just pitched back up into the air and then I would have had a whole mess on my hands. 
if it does do that, the best thing to do is to either abort by slowly easing the throttle on and countering it with rudder, but trying not to do it so so fast that your aeroplane rolls over or um, talks to the side because there's an immense amount of torque in the in the uh, in the engine, especially while you've got the gear down, because then the uh, RPM isn't kept while the gear is down. Because if if the RPM RPM was still being kept, then I, my uh, propeller would be spinning at 2,700 RPM, which it's not. So you want to either ease on the throttle and uh, abort, or you can uh, adjust it and go in for a uh, three-pointer. Anyway, I hope you uh, learned something from the videos, and uh, stay tuned for more tutorials for DCS.